When I was in the fourth grade, I would pride myself on my political knowledge. I would come to school every day super pumped to spew whatever political information my parents saw on CNN the night before. As you can probably tell, I was super fun at parties. Unfortunately, my only friend was my confidence. But as long as I had that confidence and enough knowledge to dominate a fourth grader in a political argument, I was perfectly fine. You see, my parents are flaming liberals, my dad especially. What I didn't know when I was that age was that there was so much more to politics than what my parents told me. I thought everything was simply black and white, good and bad. As I grew older, I started to become gradually less liberal and more independent. I started to pay more attention to what was really going on in the world that was much more serious than petty disagreements between political parties. Political corruption comes in many forms, but most of all, it manifests itself through greed. One of the biggest problems that we have in government today has to do with the uncertainty of our representatives' intentions. With more prevalent involvement in corp of corporations in politics, the issue of corruption becomes more pressing. To emphasize how important this matter really is, I want to talk about how money has an impact on political corruption. After doing this, I'm going to tell you why this affects all of you. For those of you who don't know, many political candidates draw support from political action committees, more well known as PACs or Super PACs. The difference between PACs and Super PACs is the amount of money that they can raise. While PACs can communicate and affiliate directly with the candidate that they represent, they can only raise limited amounts of money. Super PACs, on the other hand, are able to raise unlimited amounts of money as long as they are not associated with the candidate that they advertise for. This difference in association between these two groups warrants a Super PAC's ability to raise unlimited amounts of money, according to the Supreme Court. According to OpenSecrets.org, as of April 17, 2016, 2,265 groups organized as Super PACs have reported total receipts of $625 million and total independent expenditures of $283 million in the 2016 cycle. These super PACs have raised and spent hundreds of millions of dollars. All of this money has caused a lot of public outrage, especially with voters. The major issue lies in the secrecy that many of these financial endeavors entail. It brings up the worrying question, how can we make sure that the actions of these super PACs are lawful? As voters, it's hard for us to determine whether these politicians really do have our best interests in mind, or if the decisions in office favor the large corporations that back their super PAC. According to Garish J. Gulati in his article, Super PACs in Financing the 2012 Election, democratic government is threatened when a select few individuals or interests have a greater voice in the process and on public policy outcomes. Yet interest groups and wealthy individuals have been more than eager to help candidates finance their campaigns, and candidates desperate to win office or stay in office are eager to accept their assistance. If the wealthiest people in the country now have more of an impact on politics, then the voices of the majority of the country will be snuffed out. All of us here are starting our lives as adults, while many of us are still under the wing of our parents, sooner or later we'll, we will be faced with some sort of financial burden. Whether it's taking out student loans for grad school and having to spend half our lives paying them off, or simply going through these first four years of college and trying to put bread on the table. While those who are supposed to be representing, representing us in the government are becoming more and more influenced by big money, we are expected to fend for ourselves in a country that is becoming increasingly increasingly volatile to the middle class. Meanwhile, we college students are thinking, are you kidding? I can't make responsible financial decisions. That's ridiculous. College students like us need to realize that our voices can collectively make a huge difference in the way this country is run. So it's important that we do our research and become aware of this presence in, of corruption in government. The American people have the ability to choose their representatives. I ask that that because all of you have the ability to vote, that you use it to make informed decisions on who you want to vote for. According to the article Youth Voting from Childtrends.org, in 2012, only 49% of youth between the ages of 18 through 24 registered to vote. 
of that 49%, only 38% actually voted. If more students like us were willing to register and vote, we could make a difference in the presence of corruption in government, which is what's supposed to happen when something goes wrong in America. There's more to government than all of us probably realize, but this country was founded on the idea that the American people would have the freedom to decide their own fate. Yes, political campaigns require a lot of money in order to be successful. But while money is a necessary part of politics, there's a line that shouldn't be crossed. There's no way for us to detect the presence of corruption in government, yet we all know that this amount of money involved can only mean that something bad is going on behind the scenes. As voters who have a say in how this country is run, we need to speak up and make sure our representatives are really representing us.